sleeping i mean as in sleeping but the word is distorted nowadays protection is uh, like clothing house society country it's all part of protection and species propagation which is sex family health care energy conservation environment protection because finally we have to protect earth as well but till this thing it is fine if we keep on doing these four activities our health will be all right and so will be health of the human beings much but but added to that is greed name fame luxuries going away from nature pursuit if we keep on doing these four activities the natural human elements get added so will be health that's what uh, distorts the whole perspective of health and all this is happening because the world is coming closer it is getting faster of course this is a non lockdown era when in 24 hours how these planes move from one continent to the other is visible here and of course i'm sure all of you have seen this slide on 1980 the size of the computer and size of the indian whereas in 2013 size of the computer and size of the indian uh, these things have made a difference to health aspect of us doctors as well and if we don't look after our own health and of our families of the society and of the social circles we move around then it is like an official winner of this not my job contest now this gentleman was asked to line the side of the road with white he sides does that but does not pick this up and throw it away and turns and paints around it so that's what we will be doing if we keep practicing only and earning money for ourselves main health is of uh, health of the endothelium so vascular health or let's say cardiovascular health so it will all depend on the ldl high blood pressure mental stress b12 deficiencies sugars and nicotine and in women of course after menopause estrogen deficiency leads to dysfunction and all related atheros cardiovascular atherosclerotic disease and we all know how to manage all these aspects very well but uh, if you look at these two gentlemen age 38 uh, typical it sector smoking type of man eats vada pav at 2 am in the morning and everybody knows him he is no more uh, with us uh, bks ayengar so you looked at their carotid intima media thickening cimt here is 0.84 and cimt here is 0.58 that gives you the vascular age of these two people and actually the vascular age is exactly the reverse so much can be the difference to lifestyle can make to us if we follow certain things about diet certain things about exercise mental relaxation maybe spirituality and there is a myth that women don't suffer so much cardiovascular disease the white bar is the breast cancer bar and the red one is cardiovascular disease so a woman has a 22 times more risk of dying of a cardiovascular disease than breast cancer but the awareness related to breast cancer seems to be disproportionate out of proportion to what uh, we we know the facts are and if we now go on to actually the what is the uh, initialism or acronym of health and it is anxiety body types cigarette diet economics friends guru humor and insurance that is abcd fghi so the a part main deals with mental health body type addictions diet exercise deal with the physical health this deals with the material health financial health social health spiritual health and these are all support structures that we so if we follow this and maybe explain to our friends relatives and patients in this way probably it's easier to remember as well one of the commonest stressors in our life is rumination it is dwelling too long on negative events of the past and the biggest predictor of mental health problems is this rumination and there is a tendency to blame yourself for the problems the second aspect is the greed the comparisons the superlatives i am the best in a town but you may not be the best somewhere else so that kind of a thing goes on in our minds ego the perfectionism is a problem the pursuit for happiness is a problem non acceptance of our own inadequacies in profession as well and the i me 
my mind. All these are problem areas that we can identify. And our response to stress is, uh, as doctors, is completely different. When it comes to our own disease or disease of our kin, then we react very differently. And when we are caught in situations, uh, we deal uh, very differently. In fact, don't worry, be happy is the most false statement ever made in this lifetime. Because if you ask the fish now and tell him that don't worry, be happy, he's not going to be happy with you at all. So idea is to react with emotions honestly and be honest with these emotions. And it is said that animals are very honest with their emotions. Look at the dog here on the right hand side, calm and serene. And on the left hand side, it is obviously stressed. I'm not looking at the driver. I'm actually live in the house where one wife and two daughters. So I live in minority. So I can't show this slide otherwise, but just look at the driver. He's stressed here and he's obviously expressing it and he's calm and serene on the right side. It is said that zebras don't get hypertension because they are not chronically worried about the lions. If they see a lion, they run and save themselves, otherwise get killed. But when they're grazing, they're not thinking of the lions. And this is what humans probably have lost into them and that has led to stress and other related elements. Another common problem in life is whether to use your heart or the brain or in your terms, it's the right uh, brain or the left brain activities. According to me, actually, you must use logic. That is brain using decision. The heart decisions are good for three idiots. The name itself suggests the decisions made in that film. So logical brain decisions are more likely to be correct percentage wise. Hard decisions are emotional, instinctive and likely to be rash. And failed logical decision causes less pain because you did your best, you reasoned out, you took the most logical decision and yet it failed. It's easier to accept than doing a rash decision and ruminating on it on a longer time. Time management becomes an extremely important issue for our stress management as well. And this is my own picture taken by me on from my old cell phone. Actually, I had not touched a camera in my lifetime, even with a barge phone. But come the smartphones and even I can make some decent pictures. This is from the Kerala beach. And I'm giving you my arithmetic of time management. Let's say 10, 10 hours of main medical work. That means you should start working at nine and work till seven without any breaks, maybe a loo break here and there, or maybe some lunch break of 10, 15 minutes. How many of us really work that hard? So 10 hours of medical work is a generous dollop here. Then two hours for depending on which city you are, uh, commuting, getting ready, talking on the phone. Maybe one hour delay time in India, you have to always plan the delays. Social media time, it can vary. Seven hours rest at night. Majority of that should be sleep. Exercise one hour, family and friends one hour, hobby and personal time one hour. So this is 24 hours in one day. So two weeks, if you make a capsule of two weeks, you don't work on two Sundays. So you have 20 hours free in two weeks then you don't sit with family and friends every day for one hour. You get about five to six hours free. So if you plan your own activities, then you can do most of the things that you want and you feel never pressurized by time or you don't feel uh, that some activities you want to do and you don't have enough time to do it. One other aspect of mental health is being meditative. While you are doing an angioplasty, you have to be just there, be in the moment. Don't think of the relatives or the results or the outcomes or the complications. I think you just have to be there and that is being meditative. You don't have to learn scientific meditation for that, but just learning to be in the present moment is good enough. From A, from a mental health problem, we'll go to the B body types. Actually, I could have shown up maybe a Priyanka Chopra here, but times have changed. So I thought I would show a man instead with six to eight packs. And the body types uh, matters a lot. It's a typical uh, Ethiopian or Nigerian man who runs a marathon at the end of 42 kilometers. He's tired, but ecstatic about his win. And the Indian counterpart looks like this. Look at the diff biggest difference between them is the central obesity. 
and he is just taking a dubki in the maili ganga and feels ecstatic about it this central obesity has been the biggest health problem of india as of today and we all as doctors have to think about it and of course we know that above the age of 65 all of us have to avoid frailty whether it is in ourselves or our patients or our parents or our elder relatives ideal parameters again i'll just go over the healthy parameters bmi blood pressures sugars total cholesterol below 117 without anything else otherwise you have to come down below 70 if you have some years of diabetes or other risk factors and then of course b12 vitamin d all these are quite well known then comes the aspect of addictions or let's i call them the electric plug now this young girl does probably knows that there is danger in putting in this key into the life plug and i shudder to think what will happen to her after a few seconds she does that so in the younger age group lack of knowledge or curiosity drives you to electric plugs and this continues between the age of 15 and 25 the smoking the tobaccos uh, come into picture and they form the electric plugs of that age group between 25 and 30 maybe the first college day or uh, the first job from the milk bottle to coke bottles we change over to whiskies and then when the liver gets spoiled we start drinking bisleri waters and in the icu finally you need some proteins and then one day the candle gets lit that is how bottles come into our life starting from the age of 22 to 25 and they of course continue to be with us as addictions or electric plugs beyond that from 30 to 40 i think the electric plug is a central obesity because by that time you are in practice for a few years few children then a uh, lot of parties uh, no exercise and this thing leads to 10 years of abuse leads to a central obesity and that forms the biggest problem of health as i said from 40 to 50 it is a time for the extramarital affairs because that is a time ripe for all this you have some money success name fame and other things but it is i don't want to discuss the morality of that but it is a social crime and one has to pay a price for it one day or the other however you try to hide the identity i think it seeps through and the one day uh, it all comes out into the open beyond the age of 50 i feel the electric plug is orthopedic injuries and i don't mind getting a heart attack at the age of 55 because i know i can be back to work within 7 days but a hip fracture or fracture femur probably uh, um, is worse than any other thing so orthopedic injuries beyond the age of 55 or so become important and of course uh, some people have the addictions of fitness that also i feel uh, is an addiction of some kind and of course we all can get addicted to social media look at this girl uh, she is of course a girl with a ear plug also in the grave from mental health we go on to diet which is a uh, i think it should be predominantly vegetarian fat low fat low carb controlled gluten controlled bakery restricted and good protein diet mufa dominated oil now virgin olive oil is the best mufa oil abroad it is difficult to find virgins and in india it is difficult to find olive oil so the best mufa oil for us it is uh, actually groundnut oil um, moong fali tel and then you have less than 1 liter per person per month is what you have to follow unprocessed natural food is all common sense portion eating and forced eating this fill up your plate once and finish that there should be no second helping of whatever whether you like the dal or the chapati and if you can't kind of start eating that way you remain very very controlled forced eating is a indian tradition if you want to your guests to die early probably you should force feed them um, hunger based portions is easy to understand eat for the body not for the tongue that means during the day what we do is coffee tea and they can easily make them sugar free drinks and of course eating for body not for tongue is easy to understand it should be a sanskar on the uh, dining table for children from the age of 5 rather than or uh, apart from teaching them etiquettes of fork and spoon probably what to eat and the dieting sanskar becomes more important 
and this is my famous 90 to 10 ratio we eat about three times a day that is 100 times in a month so out of those 100 times 90 times i'll eat for the body and 10 times i will indulge into the bhajiyas and the dollops of butter or whatever i love this food but i leave it for 10 times in a month so it about once or twice a week is what i allow myself that luxury it's not cheating it's indulging in a positive way um breakfast lunch dinner pattern if you have this kind of breakfast lunch dinner pattern your waistline gets better if you eat a big dinner and go off to sleep probably they will, uh, your fat will get all stored on the uh, tummy and you will have a central obesity exercise uh, paramount importance because even a very fit person like dhoni who is in sports need to be exercising to remain fit for us who are not in sports like activities we have to make special efforts efforts to uh, get to the exercise so it improves cardiovascular efficiency it improves muscle tone prevents osteoporosis improves sense of well-being good stress management improves collaterals in the heart improves vascular age of the person improves longevity all these are advantages and if you all if this all doesn't convince you at least for this aspect you should be exercising daily and the exercise would be about 150 minutes per week which is about 30 minutes five session which can be a good combination of aerobics weights yoga and of course in addition good sex life also i feel is a part of uh, good physical and mental exercise because sex in a routine sexual activity is like 20 minutes on the treadmill burning about 150 kilocalories so it's a very good calorie burning exercise as well and it is an emotional catharsis the orgasms benefit a lot whether they are through self gratification or otherwise because they release oxytocin and endorphin in the brain you are uh, better judges of this and age is no bar for sex actually this i'm sure all of you understand very well the next aspect is the financial or the material health these are all my free thoughts uh, you should have your own and you can easily question me or mm, just destroy my thoughts in your own mind. See, all neurologists after five years of decent practice are in upper middle class bracket of the society. So that means a decent home, car, schools, foreign or holidays, everything is possible after five years. We have a good EMI capabilities at the end of five years of a good neurology practice. After 10 years, a decent bank balance gets added to this. But even after 50 years of practice thereafter, there is, you can't step beyond that. So uh, after 10 years, probably it is reduce, better to reduce the number of hours and increase the charges of your fees so that you get an excellent balance of that. There will be some 5 to 10% of neurologists who are interventionalized or even amongst lawyers, the Supreme Court lawyers, when they add earn handsomely, but we are not talking of those. We are talking of us. 90% who would uh, do a normal regular practice. The additional income will come from non-medical means like uh, you start a medical college or hospital where your presence is not required. The biggest bane in our practice is that every time our own physical presence is required. So if you get into an activity where without your presence you're earning, probably that's the only way to make extra income and despite the advancing, advancing age, and of course, if you are good in investment, you will make extra money. Because finally, what is success if you look at this x-axis and y-axis? Two years, able to walk. Four years, no shit in your pants is success. 12 years, have friends is success. 18 years, able to drive is success. 20 years, able to have sex. And 35 years, able to make money. 35 to 50 years, cut on this side, make money able to have sex 60 years, able to have drive 72 years, able to have friends 75 years, able not to shit your pants is 80 years and able to walk is 90 years. So it's a parabola and I'm sure uh, you know exactly what I want to say. You run off, don't run after this, just keep doing activities. It will happen to you, may or may not happen to you. So unhe kamyabi mein sukun nazar aya to wo torte gaye. Is what you should decide which side of the fence you want to be. And search for happiness or success is the seat of unhappiness, really. 
and you just keep performing your duty just be success may be the byproduct of your, your activities and the activities which you are we are trying to think aloud uh, together this is a who survey says for staying alive the big most important is your social integration and maybe in close friends a small group of core group of emotional core group is what matters most quitting smoking quitting boozing flu vaccine they are all okay but the highest marks are for close relationship and social integration so this is a group of friend this is a picture of 1975 so it's a 45 year old picture that's me on your extreme left and that's dr sudhir kothari very hairy or hirsute looking sudhir kothari at that time and we continue to be friends even today we meet every even on zooms we meet every thursday and we now look like this all of them are laughing at me who is uh, taking photograph and why we keep laughing like this and together we are because we know that there is a child in all of us and when we meet we unearth a child uncover that child meet without any inverted commas and that leads to charm of life and that gives a tonic to live better uh, if you look at these two towels you'll realize that there is a grasshopper here so it is said that every corner of the towel is important who and who said that it is this man robert mugabe of zimbabwe he said respect every corner of the towel because whatever wiped your face today could have wiped your backside yesterday that means whether you meet a person in a lift or your class four servants or your maids or your people around you your neighbors everybody is important to you because how each one will react to you in your life uh, you are not today you have to do it with utter humbleness or respect treat everyone well probably it makes a huge difference and be a very good listener look at this statue the way it is made even the hummingbird feels that i should hum my voice to this statue i am sure it will affect your friends and uh, people around you this is one of my best photographs the young traditional muslim couple driving their son to school for a fancy dress parade dressed as sri krishna a little bit of social integration is what matters most i think we live in a decent country we don't want to make problems by adding other woes to our own lives i think indian let that be our only religion i am a born lingayat so i don't know one party feels that we should be called hindus the other party feels we should not be called hindus but i am happy to be um, my religion to be indian and i am ready to live by it the difference between the haves and the have nots i don't think there should be a wrestling war in them in fact the haves must protect i leave it for you in the even in this covid situation there is a lot of talk about collective well being and circular economy i leave it to you. i forget i i'm sorry about the typo but it would i leave these two um, terminologies to you to think about basically it amounts to looking after people around you i may be powerful enough to look after 10 people around me somebody else would be powerful to look after 100 around him but each one of us those who are haves if they look after people around them have not probably we live in a better community and a nation g for guru where we spiritual health starts uh, 1992 i did a course called sadh samadhi yoga and this is rishi prabhakar who unfortunately guru ji is no more but the only 15 days was enough to spur a different thought process in me um it's not about god it's not about religion but it's about a bigger picture it's about the egoless state it's like being a child and identifying your role in the society so one of the things that were taught to us was like right from childhood we know that there are some things which are acceptable to us but they are not available and people whatever is available may not be acceptable to us and i am talking about the fantastic goggles that she is wearing so acceptance of whatever you've got is a very spiritual thing it's not a passive statement it's a very active statement that i accept this as my problem or my success and i my reaction to that will be equally good or bad equally good another aspect to learn about spirituality is each one's birth right to have a point of view 
Now you will take a moment to think whether this man is sitting and the girl is standing, or the girl is sitting and the boy is standing. See, the truth is only one. Like that, it is for every fight that is only one truth. But there could be two sides of the opinion, and respecting the other side does make a difference. I'm sure. These three children are supposed to undergo open heart surgery in the next half an hour. The photographer, that is myself, talks to them, tells them a story or something, and they are least bothered about what's going to happen after half an hour. They come off with fantastic natural smiles. Can we do it as adults? Probably not, because we don't live by our own five senses given by nature. Nature actually has given us only five senses. We are born with it. and we are supposed to live the moment we are talking of the future or the anxieties even in a dental opd we cannot smile so forget about open heart surgery so in this covid situation what we need to do is survive today don't brood about the indian economy or the world economy we are all doomed this is apocalypse there is no need to do that just do whatever you need to do today and nature will look after you if at all and to all do all this i don't think you have to run around and go anywhere else go to the himalayas it's not required if you want to be a sanyasi it should be in sansar that means in your normal day to day life so it is like your patient your opds your eegs your hospital admissions and if you take a look at them in a little different way the same picture is a wonderful picture happening around you evolving around you all that you have to have is the antenna to this accept this appreciate it and live life to the fullest by all kind of health that are around us insurance all of us should be insured to at least 1 bhk cost in your own city because you know how icu ex uh, um, expenses are today we don't want to blame anybody that is the reality of life even a road traffic accident and a five days in the icu would cost you lakhs of rupees so there should be health budget of the family this is especially for people around us we should tell all our relatives and friends to have a health budget the third child concept is that normally we should have two children in the family the third child should be health for health of everyone should be looked after by this separate budget made whether you have additional medical insurance or not is up to you to decide so it is said that attitude is everything in life a pessimist feels that the glass is half empty and the optimist feel that the glass is half full these two everyone knows look at this spiritualist he feels ye beer hai nahi maya hai maya and the realist astitvavadi is the one who finishes the glass whether it is half full half empty maya not maya doesn't matter nectar of life and to be enjoyed that is what attitude makes a difference and our attitude as doctor should be health tops and the health is physical health material health mental health spiritual health and of course social health as well and we are intellectual enough to understand all these aspects of health and we can be healthy and keep everyone around us very healthy i called all doctors as health preachers of the society so i should pledge today or whenever i should do i shall do my best to look after all my health the onus is on me to be a role model for health for my family my friends and my social circles i shall refrain from any kind of addictions and electric plugs i shall not be a neurotic when it comes to my own or my kin's illness and i shall aim active life of adequate length we have always been taught a lamba life long length of life the all the so called yogas and meditations and everything finally leads adds to some years at the end of the life i think we should have activities which keep us active till our death i think that is how i look at it i don't know how you look at these aspect of length of life i feel adequate length with active life is what we should look at so we looked at all this acronym of anxiety uh, mental health body types these were all three physical health financial health social health spiritual health and added to that humor i think the a little laced with humor you could sit through that uh, half an hour 35 minutes otherwise most could have gone off to sleep uh, i thank you very much for a patient listing i don't know how many questions will come because the questions will be all of more subjective or spiritual answers to that so i know we can have some discussion and i am open to suggestions thank you thank you
Thank you, Jagdish. Uh, Ashok, uh, one minute. Are you muted? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The first question would be about your uh, distribution of your food. So breakfast like a king and a, and a lunch like a farmer, dinner like a pauper. Now to take this uh, model forward, in the Marathi press especially, there's a big controversy of someone who says have five meals in a day and someone says have two meals over two meals over 16 hours, intermittent fasting. So what would you think is the right way of going about it? Because you believe in this intermittent fasting that reduces your LDL, that reduces your blood pressure, controls your diabetes, improves your cardiovascular health, or do you believe in the five small meal uh, uh, theory that is so popular? Traditionally, all these years, uh, it was three major meals and two meals in between. That is what we've been following. Intermittent fasting is a uh, maybe fad or some uh, thing added in the last few years. And if somebody has a problem, maybe a pre-diabetic or obesity, maybe it does have a definite role on a day-to-day -day basis. Intermittent fasting may have its advantage, uh, but I would go by traditional wisdom. Okay, there is another interesting question that uh, since the life of a neurologist, and I suppose a cardiologist also, is so stressful because of patients irritating us. Should we incorporate mindfulness practice in our day-to-day -day life to get away from the irritation of patients irritating us or, or what have you? Uh, so mindfulness practice. Is that I an important have given you pointers. One has to build as, on these pointers on your cardiologist also. Yeah, yeah, of course. There is no doubt that we leave uh, our medical practices stressful. So I've given you just the pointers. How to, use, how to use them in your own life is left to you. I feel I said that live in the moment. Like whenever the patient is troubling you, probably you suffer for some time. And then again, go back to your routine. So if you break your life into those compartments, it is easier. So then you can, don't carry things home. All these things are, again, traditional wisdom. I don't have to add anything to it. But learning that art and actually pra practicing that makes a difference. I don't think uh, additional of somebody learns a technique of this and technique of that. If you have, like, for example, meditation, I tried it several times, but I could not manage it. But being meditative is possible. If you are with the patient, you are with the patient. If you are at home with your family, you are with the family. If you break that life into compartments, you call it mindfulness. Yes, why not? It should be done. Uh, is, uh, again, uh, in this particular group among the neurologists of Maharashtra, there are at least 10 dedicated marathon runners. <laughs> I mean, absolutely dedicated people. Do you have any word of caution for them? Yeah, I mean, with Sudhir... I mean, uh, there is a lot of intermittent cardiologists keep saying that now, we have always said no. Um, marathon running, if you have been running from younger age group, it is all right. But if you start late, I think a um, lot of cardiology, cardiac related problems have occurred on the badminton course, squash course, and marathon running. All three have been problem areas. Those who are not used to it, uh, go into it with a lot of enthusiasm. Oh, no, no, they're very dedicated yes, guys, but I don't know whether they've not been in the correct training. No, if they go with the training and all, it is definitely possible. But there is a lot of peer pressure and competition. I think dedicated, highly intelligent. That's not the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That and then also, the cardiologists keep saying the marathon running can be dangerous to the heart. It is. Uh, and I'm more worried about the ortho injuries, actually, not so much of the cardiac problems. Rahul, you want to take off? Rahul? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, one minute, one minute. Huh. Yes. Rahul, yes. Rahul, you can speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, there is one more question. Uh, uh, how to stop stress from work interfering in personal life? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, basically, as I said, compartmentalization. You have to train yourself. Keep telling yourself that when you are examining a patient, you are a doctor. You are traveling in a lift. You are a fellow passenger. You are driving a car. You are a driver. When you come home, you are a husband. You are a father. So if you keep doing that compartmentalization and identify your role, so called being in the present, it helps. And other activities like recreational activities, as I said, uh, friends, social circles, all these will help ameliorate the situation. It also depends on your basic personality type. But main crux, main thing is to live that moment. That will going to reduce your stress. The problem, the problem is, uh, as a doctor, you are put here, and as a uh, son or a husband or whatever, you are uh, at a different level, and we get uh, tend to feel, you know, you want to be always at that higher level where people say, "My bab, my bab, doctor," you know. So you have to break that mental note in your mind. I have uh, one more question. Uh, his no, don't name? walk, run. No, do weights. No, no, Ashok, uh, can you repeat? Yeah, I couldn't hear the first part of it. Can I repeat it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I wish to know is, uh, do you have a specific advice to your patients and doctors? Run, walk, uh, weights. Don't do weights. Only don't run. Just walk. Just do yoga. No, don't do yoga. Oh, do you have any specific advice on exercise today? It can be very, very controversial. No, no. I think there is no controversy. If, if you are talking of a normal person, it's a different advice. And for individual limitations, like cardiac limitations, we are different. So we will talk of normal person. So minimum, as I said, exercise time is about 150 minutes per week. So 30 minutes, five sessions, in which you have to do... Uh, Definitely aerobic activity brisk enough to increase your heart rate to say 80% of your target heart rate. You have to do weights, especially after the age of 50, uh, because you have to have bigger, better bone structure. That's why. And yoga is for flexibility. Actually, a good combo of the three is the best. Depending on your personality, whether you like visibility, you may change things a bit. But I think this is what the basic principle is. And there is no controversy about this. Yeah. I think uh, another one, I think many neurologists in Maharashtra, suppose in smaller towns or in district places, sound wind? Have, have I lost the sound or everybody has? No, I have lost. I lost it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Rahul, can you repeat? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I will repeat. I will. Is it audible now? Yeah. Yeah. It's audible? Yes. Yeah. Now, I was just asking that in many towns in Maharashtra, there are very few neurologists in small district places and they land up seeing almost 80 to 100 patients per day in a day, which is really very stressful. What is your suggestion? How should they handle their uh, lifestyle in such situations? Oh, I made that suggestion. Actually, 10 hours of work, as I said. In 10 hours, whatever you can manage, you should be able to. You should have extra force so that you don't uh, overburden yourself. And you should delegate more responsibilities. So 10 hours, Monday to Saturday, is a lot of work. I think you can easily see um, at least 50, 60 patients definitely in that uh, period. So remaining is all, all individual skills, how to reduce the denseness of work, as we call it. But if anybody who's working from 9 a.m. in the morning to 7 p.m. without incessantly, without a break, can see 70, 80 patients, actually. It's just that we dilute the time a lot. And that's why we feel, oh, I work from 10 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. So I think it's a question of uh, our, our time management inside those 10 hours. Uh, 
Dr. Anu Gaikwad asks how to handle forgetfulness. Oh. <laughs> The question to neurologists, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I have an answer for that. I'm because at least uh, nobody can beat me for forgetfulness. So I don't think uh, it's a wrong question. Uh, Rahul, you want to tell something about how to avoid being forgetful? Uh, I think uh, about forgetfulness, I think social socialization, which is not now allowed in this COVID era, but socializing, mixing with people and whatever this solving uh, various uh, crosswords, driving, driving is a fantastic memory exercise. I think these are the, some of the clues and again diet prevention of this uh, cardiovascular risk factors. These all will take care of, uh, I think, preventing dementia in future life. Yeah, but uh, let us uh, reassure Dr. Anu Gaikwad that being forgetful is not getting demented. Uh, being yeah. forgetful is, uh, is, is normal. I mean, only when his wife starts complaining, do something about uh, Anu, he's forgetting everything, then we'll bother about dementia. Okay. Sir, there is one comment from Dr. Meshram, sir, that Ashok Sirsat, sir, is looking quite slimmer today. <laughs> I have answered that question to him. <laughs> I got that question. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Otherwise, we'll let Jagdish go. <laughs> okay, Jagdish. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Jagdish, thank you. Thanks, Ashok. Thanks, Rahul. Yeah. Yes, sir.